welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I am your host, The Boss. I just want to thank the viewers and everybody who supported me over the years. It's seven years I have my show to date. And if you miss anything or the, any of the episodes, I'm on weeknights, Monday to Friday from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Care Vision and uh, Bell 5 for channel 658. And you can get us through the various channels that are offered in, in the U.S. and we're also available in London, U.K. So if, you, in case you missed all of that, then you could just go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, DBoss Networks, and you could see all the wonderful guests and you can watch them at your own time and whenever you're available to sit and watch them, but enjoy. But I hope everybody's been doing there are 15 minutes of laughing per day because it's working and it's helping. I have a lot of people sending me messages and telling me, oh my gosh, I'm doing my 15 minutes of laughing. It's great because it releases all those endomorphins in your body. It keeps your abs toned. If you have to warm up for speaking engagements, if you sing, it helps. And you know, a lot of people go, oh, well, I don't have anybody to laugh with. Well, you could put on something funny. You could call somebody that you know, that's, you know, maybe make you laugh. You can also, and if you don't have anybody in this last resort, then you can go to apply. Yes, they have laughing classes you can do. But, you know, hopefully you don't have to do that because then you won't get that every single day. So, you know, it keeps you youthful looking and what you put out is what you get back. But anyways, we're going to hear from our one of our sponsors, Vital Steps. And they're here in Toronto. And if and they're one of the people telling you that if you need to work out, you need to go to see them to work out and um, know what exercise is right for you to do. Because if you had surgery, if you had something going on with your body, if you have if you had something in your stomach, um, abdominal surgery, there's certain exercises that you cannot do. So they could, they will advise you. They got Joanne, Dr. Jo Joanne James. She will tell you exactly what to do and what you can do and just do a full evaluation. Because sometimes you end up doing exercises and it's not good for you. And that's, you know, that's, that's not helpful either. Okay. But anyways, we're going to hear from, hear from them, Joanne James, and we'll be right back with my special guest. Welcome to your vital steps to better health. I'm Joanne James. Today we're going to talk about exercising in the sun. We all love the sun. It's been the winter. Now we want to get out into the fresh air and enjoy the great weather. However, we have to be very mindful when we're exercising in the sun. First of all, you want to protect your skin at all costs. Regardless of your background, you still need to wear a sunblock of 30 plus. Also, you want to make sure you're wearing a hat to protect your facial skin, as well as glasses to protect your eyes. Also make sure that you hydrate as you're doing your activities. Sometimes you won't feel that you're thirsty, but in actual fact you are. So make sure you drink. Don't wait to become dehydrated first. And listen to your body. If you start feeling a little nauseous or dizzy or fatigued, that might be signs of a heat stroke. Get into the shade, sit down and call somebody to assist you. Being out in the sun and exercising is great, but you have to be um, very, very, very aware of where you are, what you're doing, and make safety your top priority. I'm Joanne James, and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. See you next time. Well, thank you for that um, information. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, if you're living in Canada here, the sun, <laughs> the sun's going to go down very soon. So... I don't know how, but anyways, but if you're going, but if you're going away and you're in the sun and you're in this, the, the climates that are hot all the time, then that is great. Excellent voice advice. Use your sun blocker. And also she talks about healthy snacking. That doesn't mean to eat healthy snacky, snacky, that snacky or whatever. That means that you have to eat foods or do things, be, like if you're sitting down on the computer for a long time, get up and move around. I'm bad. I will say five minutes, I'm going to get up. Five minutes, it's a half hour. Next time I say, okay, 10 minutes. Next time it's an hour. So get up and do some kind of movement between your sitting down, stretching, something, walking, and, you know, then come back and sit down so that keeps the circulation going. But, people, 
you know, this is the time of the movies and everything and all these films and everybody's coming out with all the films and stuff like that. And who can come out with the films and are allowed. But I got somebody here. Her name is Alexandrine, but we'll call her Alex Boudre Fournier. And she's going to tell us about the journey and everything about um, she's one of the directors. And she's going to tell us about La Tumba Mamba. So with no further ado, I introduce to you, Alex. Hello. Hi. Thanks for uh, having me today. I really appreciate it. Yes. Well, Alex, here at the Real Life Matters, we like to find out everybody's background, their cultural background, where they come from, and then we'll get into you. I am, uh, I am from uh, the Eastern Township and uh, the South of Montreal. So this is where I was born. And then I got a job here on the West Coast of Canada in Victoria. And uh, I moved here with my family 12 years ago. And now we are living here and we're, you know, this is where our new home is in Victoria <laughs> on Vancouver Island. Woo! So I guess you must be not having those you're, you're not having those tough winters like you had in Quebec. <laughs> no, 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 no tough winters, and uh, we we uh, we follow the guidelines of uh, well, good hydrate hydration. You know, like we hydrate ourselves well and and all of this. But no, no, no big winter, and uh, but that's fine with us. We're we're good with it. <laughs> so you do, so you do you go skiing out there or or do you ski or no? Not really. We're more into like, uh, we like walking in the forest. We like uh, doing some boating. Uh, my husband really likes fishing, you know, that kind of thing. So we, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to enjoy those, uh, those sports and activities. It's such a beautiful place here. Uh, lots wow. of outdoors activities, lots of outdoor activities. Yeah. Well, I can see you, I can see you doing that. It looks like you're in your face. Like I, I can't wait to get outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when Joanne, when Joanne James was talking about hydration, well, I guess you guys will get it that bad. So when we were preparing here, yeah, we gotta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get tan very quickly, but then in September, October, I get like white again very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Well, at, least, yeah. at least you get your tan; it can last for a little bit. You just gotta go away. <laughs> exactly, I can enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're one of the directors of this movie. Yes. So tell us a little bit about it. So, um, you know, like um, this movie, we started working on it. Uh, so I'm the co-director, as you said, the other filmmaker is DJ Higue and he's also a, a music producer and he's based in Havana in Cuba. So that's where I live. And uh, uh, we've okay. met uh, DJ Higue and I, we've met maybe, I would say like 15, 15 years ago when we became friends. Um, because I I worked in, a lot in Cuba. I'm um, I'm an anthropologist. I'm, I'm conducting research um, on uh, the culture of Cuba. And at the beginning, I was really interested in looking at uh, the recording studios uh, in Cuba, hip hop, and the urban music in the eastern part of the island, so around the city of uh, Santiago. And uh, DJ Higue is is from that city, and so we met and. Um, we uh, really um, had a good friendship. We get, we became friends, and, and eight years ago, we decided to work on that project, uh, La Tumba Mambi. So it's a film about um, a group of uh, traditional dance and music from uh, from Santiago de Cuba. And I'm I'm also a very good friend of those members of the the traditional group of dance and music. Uh, mainly one of them, her name is Kelly. We have the same age. Uh, you know, we've known wow. also each other for a long time. And uh, I'm now the godmother of her, uh, of her uh, son. And, you know, it's a long time. <laughs> so you have to, they joined you in the family. I know, I know. <laughs> and, like, one day she told me, Hey Alex, like you know, like our our group of traditional dance and music, it's really something that is important for for me, for my mother, for my grandmother. You know, it's something that we transmit through generations. But she said, I feel that the young generations they don't really they're they're not interested in joining the group anymore. You know, they're not interested in coming and and seeing what we're doing. So she told me maybe if we were doing something with a DJ, you know, that that we would transform our music to make it more accessible wow. to younger generations, then maybe the young people would, would love to come and, and join or be interested in what we're doing and then helping us to transmit that 
wonderful culture. So then I was like, wow, that's such a great idea. And I said, I know a DJ, DJ Higue. <laughs> he's, my friend. Uh, he's my friend. So why don't we do something together, you know, and um, he could work on, on your music. So we, re we could record your drums. We could record your singing. Wow. And then he could use that music to... Um, and to transform it in a way using rhythm and music using like the digital technology you know to um to transform that music and make it more accessible and i guess more fun for the younger generation so that's okay. that's how the project started it started really as a music project but then after we decided to do oh. a, a, a short so you film still did the music you still did the music but then you made you took it further yeah we took it further we did the film and the film is about at this group of uh, dance and music called La Tumba Francesa. Uh, and um, and uh, so we did the, the film about um, the son of Kelly. Who, uh, so he is the main character of the film. We follow him throughout the film. And uh, the story is that um, uh, we start, the, he's, at, he's, in his, uh, he's, he's at school, he's maybe eight, nine years old. And uh, the teacher says, OK, like now you have to do a project for the class about uh, something that is particular of Cuban culture. So he has the idea, oh, I'm going to do my project on the Tumba Francesa, the, the, the group that he is part of and that his mother, grandmother are all part of. Wow. So the film is about how he talks to his grandmother about the Tumba Francesa and kind of saying, can you help me with my project? And then she's like, of course, I can help you. And, you know, he asks questions, she answers. And it's, he's kind of uh, realizing how amazing this group is. So this is a little bit like what the film is about. Um, so it's kind of a mix between a documentary and a fiction, you know, because you have um, uh, the, the son who's like kind of acting his own role. But also throughout the film, we learn about the, the group of uh, traditional dance and music. So it's kind of a mix between documentary and fiction. So, so where did you film this, this, um, the film? Did you film it in Cuba or, or yeah, everything was filmed in Cuba and that was prior, before the pandemic, <laughs> we filmed it before the pandemic. It's all in Santiago de Cuba. And then after, uh, DJ Higue, uh, took the footage so all the images and all the video went to Havana where, where he now lives. And uh, he edited the film with a colleague there in Havana. So the whole film was shot and edited uh, all in Cuba. And the reason why it took eight years is because um, it was really long to, well, develop that relationship, develop the project. But also during uh, during COVID, we had to stop the, um, the production yeah. of the film. And then when COVID ended, then we, we, we were like, hey, we need to finish the, the film. And so we finished it and now it's, uh, it's over and we're, yeah, we're now we're presenting <laughs> it. We're really happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you did, so, okay. So the other guy, the other director, he edited it and stuff. So you were the directing all the, the scenes or what you were you doing? Yeah, we were like uh, basically working together. You know, it was, we had a plan of what, how we wanted for the film and uh, we talked uh, like every three or four weeks or whenever we needed to talk. And he was like working on it. He was showing me like um, uh, like uh, edit, like scenes, basically, like, oh, do you like this? And then I was like, yeah, but let's add that. Let's add that. So we were kind yeah. of working <laughs> long, distance, long distance, but as collaborators. But he was really the one who was editing and working on the soundtrack, you know, because the soundtrack of the film is all the music of that group with his own wow. uh, electronic arrangement. So it's all his own music, which um, which is really like the soundtrack is amazing of, of the of the film. Yeah. All right. So okay. So it took eight years to put together. Mm -hmm. So where can has, has it been released yet or no? So yes, it has been released, and uh, we had uh, the first. Uh, uh, if I can say uh, present the the first presentation here in in Victoria, we're gonna have to we're organizing a, a first screening in Cuba uh, probably in the month of November. Okay. And um, but yeah, now it's it's really like going everywhere in the world in festivals, so it's it's traveling everywhere. Okay, all right. So we're gonna watch this, and then you go, then you go, we'll talk some more. Okay, let's go. Okay. Let's, let's start. okay. Mujeres de la y para reforzar. 
yo tuve que foguearme con el libro de canto y era leyendo el día entero ahí, leyendo porque todo está escrito en creol. ¿Y yo qué sé de creol? Y yo no sé cómo, cómo, cómo fue así, pero yo oía la voz de mi abuela. A mí me parece que vamos a tener que salir al carnaval con lo poco que tenemos. Por eso mismo el apellido de, de nosotros nunca lo vamos a saber. Bueno, y de yo di la pues saludaba a Sayamue, a Sayamue Bonsoa. Pues mi bello dirá, pues saludaba, vas allá mueve, vas allá mueve, bonsoir. Si no pa' con Franky, paro el mape, pa' la responda, digan bonsoir. Responda, digan bonsoir. ¿Vas a hablar de la tumba? No. Claro. Ah, bueno. Ah, bueno, ¿me puedes ayudar? Mi propia vida, la tumba francesa, la caridad de Oriente. In Spanish, is it Spanish or French? Or is, so they it, speak in Spanish, but the songs yeah. are in are in Haitian Creole. Creole. Yeah, Haitian. That's what I thought. I was like, I was like yeah. but they, they they are they were transmitted to them at least from four or five generations, at least okay. orally, you know, like from so no yes. written, they haven't written it down. So uh like Andrea, the the, the grandmother, the singer. She doesn't understand the, the meaning of each word. She doesn't speak Creole herself. Oh. You know? so she, knows, she knows the sound of each of those songs. She knows the sound of the words. So she sings them. But she and she knows the general uh, meaning, but she's not um, she's not a fluent uh, Creole speaker. So that's interesting okay. because that, that's when that's why she said at the beginning. Uh, I couldn't understand anything. I don't speak Creole, but you know, I could hear the voice of my grandmother, and I was just like wow. doing it. So, yeah, it's it's about uh, it's about the the film is really about um, how you transmit uh, culture. You know, when when there is no uh, written uh, traces of of all of that, and how you um, you create your identity based on on those transmissions. And, and those, that's why on those translations of the music. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. and I noticed that they had subtitles. So does the movie have the subtitles in it or do you guys have saying in English or no? Yes, all the movie has subtitles because uh, we wanted to keep, um, you know, in case like people speak Spanish, they can actually yeah. like listen to what the person is saying uh, in their own words. And then for the ones who don't speak Spanish, they can read the subtitles. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you all maybe later on, depending how it goes, maybe you might just translate it so people other... So people can see the, uh, you know, the movie. Okay, yes, we yeah. got it. Because <laughs> yeah. you really got to pay attention in the movies when those subtitles are going. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, you like, can't uh, look at your yeah, phone yes. at the same time. <laughs> if not, you lose track of the film, that's for sure. <laughs> you missed the whole thing, you know. It's like, wait, what's happening? You got to go back and go back. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you have to watch. You have to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> but the film is only 30 minutes long. You oh, know? 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you if you're able to concentrate 30 minutes, yeah. and we didn't translate the the songs, we just translated when they talk in Spanish because the songs, um, the songs, it doesn't make sense. No, doesn't make sense. They don't know what it means, so we just left it like that. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So what's up next for you guys? What are you going to be doing after this? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> We're, we're now we're exploring ideas, you know, like I, I invited the DJ Higue to come here, visit us in Canada. Uh, okay. We processed the, the visa. We're still waiting for the visa. It's really very, it's really, really long. You know, anybody um, who's going through that process, they know that it's, it's very long to invite someone at wow. least from Cuba. So uh, we're waiting for that. And hopefully he's going to be here in, in the fall and we can think about the, the next project. Yeah. Well but. But DJ Higue is, is always producing music. Uh, people can check out his, uh, his uh, music online. Uh, DJ Higue uh, is, is doing amazing work, um, like not just related to this project, of course, but many, many yes. other, uh, other music. And he's really famous in Cuba. So uh, like, <laughs> always like firing up the dance floor, you know, he's, he's really good, really good. All right. So are, um, are there any um, shout outs that you want to give to your people? Well, I want to thank, uh, you know, all of the people of the Tumba Francesa that uh, we see in the film uh, that are who are in Cuba. So Kelly, Andrea, uh, Flavio, that uh, we see the son that is there in the film. Uh, a, a big shout out to, uh, of course, DJ Higue, his wife and kids uh, back uh, back in Cuba, all the family in Cuba. Like um, when I'm going to share this, they won't believe it. They'll be so happy to, uh, to be part of this uh, this conversation that we're having today. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah. So shout well, out hopefully when he comes, he comes, he can come in and, and, and you could do it. You can just see, well, how's it going? So you can come in and talk. To oh, him. you would love that. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, so just, yeah. keep, you know, just keep so you can come back and give us updates, you know, because it's good to hear from him <laughs> what he's what he thinks also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would everybody would love him. He's, he's quite a character. So it's very fun to talk to him. Okay, so if people want to keep up with you on social medias, where can they find you? Uh, it's my full name uh, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Alexandrine Boudreau Fournier, or they just can Google uh, Google uh, Alex Boudreau. They'll find me there. There are not what? that many people with my name. So. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot of letters there. Yes, a lot of letters. <laughs> If people put Alex Boudreau or La Tumba Mambi uh, online, you know they'll they'll find our website and they can uh, reach out from there. Okay. All right. So everybody watch the movie. Where, well, where can they see the movie at though? Where well, is now it? they can see the movie uh, in Toronto at the Caribbean Film Festival. They can see it online. Oh, it's pretty Hill. easy to, to watch, but we're touring around, you know, so uh, people can uh, join or look at our, join our Instagram uh, page, look at our website and we announce the future screening. And oh, soon it's yes, people got to pay, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention and read the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> pay attention read the subtitles and look for when the film so you guys can watch it's 30 minutes yeah you know they have subtitles on it but it's no it's not that long it's not like no a, no and they're big they're, so 40 they're not 42 so. uh, segments yeah. or something for a watch. yeah <laughs> exactly yes <laughs> All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, Alex, having you come on and talking about this and talking about the whole process of it. So I'm, um, you know, we're so glad to hear, you know, hear you talk about it and everybody watch the film, you know, yeah. look at it, you know, look up for it, you know, and I was going to, I'm going to put the, you know, you can see the trailer and if you missed it or a little bit earlier, oh, well, you got to have to wait and go onto the YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or they can contact me and I'll be happy to share the trailer with them and even the if they're interested. <laughs> All right. All right. So I do want to thank the viewers tonight for uh, tuning in to Real Life Matters here with Alex, one of the uh, co-directors of uh, this film. So everybody, so good night and bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>